I'm sure you're all sick of my questions and stuff, but uh, this is something that uh, we've devised a while back. Um, a little dashboarding tool called Meerkat. Um, I even had a guy whip up a little logo. See, the E's look like meerkats? How cute is that? Um, you're not finished unless you've got a logo for your project. The little E's are little meerkats, see? You don't see that? Come on, man. Nerds. <laughs> you're not artists. It's fine. But that's really what this talk is about, is the crossover between nerds and art. Actually, that's not really true, but <laughs> close enough. When your manager turns up and says, what have you been working on this whole time? You go, here's a shiny dashboard. And he goes, ooh, that's great. And he doesn't understand anything. But ideally, the point here is that we can create a dashboarding tool where he does understand straight away what's important to him and how it all works. So how did we get here? Uh, we've been a long time Nagviz user, um, tried dashing didn't really like it, too much Ruby. Um, and Grafana is not really the same thing. So we needed a tool that worked for our customers in a way that made sense for their 24 by 7 operations to be able to monitor many different things in their business. The word monitoring to some of our customers means very different things to what we would think. For example, in the TV industry, monitoring means sitting in front of a, a vast wall of TV screens because all that matters is that they've got vision happening. Um, same thing for lots of different people. Monitoring means different things. Um, in our case, we needed a way of being able to very quickly and easily take Isinga checks and place them on a very logical overview of their um, uh, infrastructure and uh, you know, display the status to the users. And Nagviz filled that need, but it became kind of a little bit old. Um, no offense to the Nagviz guy if he's here. Um, you know, PHP and JavaScript, we've moved on a little bit. We decided to start completely from scratch. So we've written something with a Go backend and a, a Preact front end. Um, the Go backend talks to the uh, Singer API uh, using credentials, and then the Preact front end renders the uh, check status and a, f a bunch of other things. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to point out is sort of the deficiencies. Many people say, oh, we just use Grafana for that. Um, this is a random uh, demo dashboard I pulled off the internet. I think these are great for engineers. It's great for someone to figure out what went wrong. Uh, generally, you end up looking at a graph like this after something went wrong and not before. Uh, and, the, and it's very helpful to be able to say, well, we've got correlations over time between these things. We can drill down. We can figure out what the you know, interface statistics are, the throughput, the disk space. Oh, we, know, we know it broke because this is what happened. That's very helpful for an engineer. And a, a time series data is very helpful in that instance. But that's not helpful in the instance where you need to know what you care about is working until it's not. And then when it's not, you need to call the right person. And you know, a lot of these dashboards are designed with organizations where the people watching them are employed to watch them the whole time. They don't know what they really need to know. But they know that they need that if that thing goes wrong, you call someone. Um, so um, I was reminded of the uh, uh, HBO series Chernobyl. Anyone seen that with the, with the AZ5 button? I don't think it's AZ5, it's um, probably something in Russian, but I was like, that's the ultimate in dashboard, you know? The guy's got the red light there, he's like, should we push it? Should we not push it? Anyway, that is, so <laughs> we could, well, it didn't work out well, but uh, maybe they had better monitoring, we'd be okay, you know? So, um, so this is an example, um, a Meerkat dashboard. I actually have the live version of this running. Um, but this gives you an idea. This is for a, um, I took this screenshot uh, yesterday um, just to explain some of the components. So the background is a, d is a JPEG. That's what these logos are. This particular workflow is a video feed that takes um, a data from a data source. It takes video from a, a Greyhound racetrack, merges the two together, and then schedules whether they should be streamed or not. And so these video, um, uh, images, the videos themselves that are going out to Akmai only turn on and off depending on when the race starts. Um, I've actually got a, a live demo here. This is a business process check. So we've got an, uh, 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 an element, a Meerkat element of type card that has the business process. And these two data feeds go on and off all the time because they're not very good. And, but you know the whole thing stays the same. And the, the staff were able to look at this and go, yep, that makes sense to me. I know about what all these bits are. I know how to get into them. I know how to log into them if they're broken. But I can very clearly see straight away how it actually works. I think I actually have a, um, a, a real view of that here somewhere, if I drag that over. Um, this, is the, this is the real dashboard right now. Um, you can see that one of these, 
if we wait long enough or if we refresh it, we might get, we might get to watch a, watch a real grey, greyhound race. Um, so that's a uniquely Australian thing. I don't know if anyone's got been involved in that, but you know, they bet on them and then murder them afterwards. It's not very pleasant, but that's <laughs> what happens. <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, I have another another dashboard here that's a bit more I interesting. This is um, some Adver gear. Um, this connects uh, two parts of a TV station together, I guess. Um, these are fibre optic light levels, which are very helpful if you might want to figure out if your fibre is dying. This is a meerkat type object of type static information, and that this is the connection ID for that, that connection. So the NOC staff know that if this thing goes red, they start getting fibre loss. They call up the provider and say, this is the ID that you need to fix it, it's going down. It gives them all the information they need straight away there. Um, and then these checks are SNMP or, are they SNMP, Woody? Uh, maybe they're actually it's a REST API. I think this is, a, this is a REST API check that is a group of checks that checks this device if it's got any alarms on it or not. So we're using a meta check there to design that kind of thing. Um, how do I get rid of this guy? I'll go through that. I've got an actual demo of how we make them. Where are we? Real demo. Okay, I've got an actual... Whoa. What happened here? Uh, where'd my mouse go? Is this going to work? Maybe not. How do I make this screen work on that screen? No idea. Yeah, I should have used Linux. I have got Linux here somewhere. Uh, where are we? Where's my... Where's my thing? Oh, that's annoying. I've got a virtual machine here where I can demonstrate the whole thing, but here we are. Ah, cool. So this is what Meerkat looks like. Um, to install it, you oh, we don't have a Debian package yet, but um, reasonably straightforward. Um, you get a shell script. Um, this is the back end of it. Um, you can make a dashboard relatively easily. This one here is to examine the profitability of a company. Um, these are uh, objects of type card. And you simply can edit the dashboard relatively easily. You can drag them around. And there's a whole bunch of different types of elements that you can get. So if we want to make a new element, there's lots of different types here. We've got SVG. We've got images. So uh, a, a card is the one you see there. An SVG is um, a, you know, a, a marker, you know, a tick box or a cross. You can actually swap the images out themselves. You can have a picture of the firewall and a picture of the firewall on fire. Um, and then there's lines, so you can do um, you know, lines that join things together. And this is set up with a dummy um, connection, so you can do lines as well. And then on top of that, you can have dynamic text, which is pretty cool, static text, and a bunch of other static things, along with HLS and audio stream, so you can embed video and sound if you like. Um, the dynamic text is helpful. It pulls the text out of a, um, a check. Um, uh, from oh, a host var, actually. So if we pick this machine, we can pick a, a host var. I don't know, it's, an, it's, a, it's address. And that way we can actually plumb host vars all the way from, in our case, Netbox, through to the dashboard users to be able to pick out, well, you know, this is the, as I said, the connection ID for the connection. And that connection ID I showed you before, by the way, was actually dynamic. It uses this type of card, and from time to time, they replumb the connection, and they update Netbox with a new connection ID, and it flows through the dashboard so that people have the exact correct information when they want to call the knock straight away. On top of that, a service check can actually also display performance data. Um, if we pick, uh, that's a host. If we pick a service, oh, by the way, in terms of types of things, we can do, um, well, go away. Pick a card. This is Wigan Out. We'll pick a service. And then in a, in a service, we've got um, extra options here for performance data. So we can actually output the, the plug-in output if we like, or the... Um, you know, the, the percentage of disk space or anything like that. And that way you can get the performance data metrics and the numbers that you need directly on the screen. Because, you know, if you, you just write a random plugin that says, 
how many staff are in the building, and you can just stick it on there, and it's a, it's a number that is important. And you can see how that becomes flexible when you can start plumbing in the output of a plugin based on its performance data. You can set a default option. They can also play sounds and do a whole bunch of other useful things. Um, yeah, that's, that's about, about it for the demo. Now, I have no idea where my slides went, um, but I think that was really all I had. So, um, does anyone have any questions? What do we think? Good? It's awesome. Some, some questions? Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow, yeah. It's, it's like two years' worth of work. Um, you showed uh, on your demos only the GUI for creating a dashboard. Do you have also the possibility to create those dashboards via text files, configuration files? Yeah, they're stored on disk as JSON. Um, it's like JSON all in one line, and we actually have a feature request to make it pretty printed JSON and, and fix that. Um, pull request welcome. It's on GitHub. <laughs> uh, uh, but but and, and, and Matt actually, <laughs> Matt has a messed up Excel spreadsheet that he uses to format the dashboards into neat, neat rows uh, so that you can then um, have... Um, uh, if you have a lot of widgets all on the one thing, dragging them around gets kind of annoying. And so um, you'll end up with a... I, I can show you some, some more complicated versions if you like. But yes, you can edit the JSON directly on disk and it just kind of works. Yep. Burton was asking how long it takes us to do this. It's, 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 this was sponsored by a number of our customers and they all agreed to open source it. It's been literally about two, two years worth of work just to kind of get to the right, right cache. Um, it, it, we just added a feature last week for HTTP authentication. It had no authentication. We didn't really need it because it's designed to go on TVs. Um, but some people wanted it. Um, and then we also... Um, uh, we've tuned it to be very performant as well because it just hammers the API really badly. So once you have about 1,500 checks on here, that Meerkat itself is just sitting there just pounding the API really hard. So we've done a whole bunch of... There's a, a, a Go feature called Group Cache built into this. So it'll only check the things that it needs to and it's got a... You know, you can tune that and ma manage performance. Um, in your demo, you showed your object list at a drop-down and there is... I single image and static image. What's the difference? Uh, so the uh, the I single image is like this dashboard here. I just whipped these up on the plane. Actually, uh, where are we? Network diagram. So this is this is a an image of Postgres. Sorry, it's cut off, um, and it's down at the moment. And then when it's up, it'll switch back to being down. Those servers will switch from being servers to being in flames if they are down. So that's what that means. A static image is literally just a, a, a static image, a JPEG or a logo. So, but how we would normally build these is that we'd do the background in Lucidchart or, you know, in Draw.io. Or, or, and really what should actually happen is we get the system owners to, to do that, the people that understand how the system works at a high level. We literally, before they say, we want monitoring, we go, right, give me a high-level design of how this system works. They draw it on a napkin we translate it into, you know, Vizio or something, and then we find the checks that we need to overlay, and we overlay the checks, and we build the checks from there. We use this as the user interface to design the monitoring, not so much a kind of, right, we've got all these things, we want to check a thousand things, we don't care about that, we really care about these 500 things that go into making this thing, we group them together, and then put the groups up here if needs be, and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of an interface-driven development from that point of view. Changes the way you, you think about monitoring a bit. Wow. So, are there any more questions for Dave? Oh. <clears throat> All right. In that case, Great. thanks a lot, Dave.